Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hey guys, we've got something unique for you for this week's episode of Driving at Home. What you're about to hear took place on stage during our Central Texas Housing Summit last week. And what we talked about was so compelling that we felt like we needed to share it with you guys as a special episode. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So Claire, I think we talked previously about this episode really being focused on a look forward because we expect that a lot of today's programming will be sort of a look back on where we've come over the last six months. So as you're thinking about the fall and guiding these guys as they engage clients looking towards the fall for their buying and home selling needs, what should they expect? Well, there are a couple of factors right now in the broader economy that are really important to be attuned to. And these two factors are nothing new, the first of which is inflation, of course, and the second of which is interest rates. So on the front of inflation, broadly speaking, we're anticipating that inflationary pressures will continue to subside, right? In June, we saw that inflation continued to decelerate with the headline number coming in at about 3% year over year, and then core inflation, which strips those more volatile categories of food and energy, coming in at 4.8% year over year. So broadly speaking, you know, we're down considerably from last year's most recent highs of, you know, of course, 9%, close to that that 10% level. So as inflation hopefully continues to dissipate, that will take the pressure right off the Federal Reserve to continue to raise its federal funds rate. And there's that indirect relationship between the federal funds rate and mortgage rates. So broadly speaking, we're expecting that inflation will continue to decelerate. That will relieve some pressure on mortgage rates. So maybe we'll see them closer to the low to mid six range by the end of the year. So that's good. People like lower rates. But remind us, what's the Fed's ideal in terms of the inflation rate, just to give these guys a sense of where we are and where we would prefer to be? Absolutely. So they're looking at a target rate of about 2%. So, of course, we're getting closer to that, right? We're only one point off the mark. That's pretty good. (laughs) We're definitely getting closer, but there are concerns, right, just about the balance between a very strong labor market and then, of course, just continued higher inflation than they would otherwise like to see. So inflation decelerating a touch, that's a good thing. Potentially impacting mortgage rates in a positive way for these guys. What else should we expect for the fall? So overall, now we have to remember that within the Austin housing market in particular, we are now a year into kind of this cycle in which our market has been adjusting, right? So in April and May of 2022 is when we saw peak median sales prices in Austin. That's when we reached the peak of home prices. But in June of last year is really when that pricing pressure started to decelerate, right? And we started to see some moderation in home prices. So now, of course, we're over a year into that cycle. So overall, we can expect that there may be some flatlining in home prices, but we aren't anticipating that we're going to see that very strong year-over-year home price moderation that we have been seeing, you know, over the past several months, again, because we're now in a more analogous apples-to-apples comparison within the market. So the moderation, aka declining prices, might slow as combined with potentially lower interest rates feels positive as we look towards the fall for consumers, yes? Absolutely. And we have to remember that home prices are still very much elevated. Relative to those pre-pandemic levels, relative to June of 2019, the Benian sales price in the Austin MSA surpassed that price by 50% in June of this year. So overall, we have to remember that those affordability constraints on the home price front are still very much at play. And then, of course, when you're coupling that with higher rates, that's really driving, you know, that's really what's been driving that moderation in sales activity and prices themselves. Our, our memories are short. The last couple of years were anomalies. And the chaos was fun in some ways and overwhelming in others. But I think we should always have expected that there would be correction in the market. And that's what we're experiencing now. Any last words about what we might expect this fall? So overall, the Austin economy just remains very well poised to continue to experience fairly robust growth, right? We have a strong labor market year over year. In June, we saw that jobs growth measured about 4.4%, which is one of the highest numbers across the state. 
So just continued expectations for robust population growth, of course, driving that demand for housing. So overall, we are weathering kind of the broader macroeconomic turbulence well, if you will. Okay, great. And each week we look at the kind of week over week numbers, what's happening in the market this week. So broadly speaking, we've seen a little bit of flatlining in activity, and that's somewhat to be anticipated, right? We've talked in weeks previously just about how the holiday schedule has affected sales activity with, of course, the July 4th holiday, you know, causing a little bit of turbulence, right, around sales activity just as people were taking off for vacation and whatnot. But overall, week over week this week, we saw pretty steady activity. Awesome. Well, guys, you heard it here live. Thank you for joining us for our first ever live driving at home. (laughs) Thank you for having me. 